Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe to the channel for regular content on ancient architecture, as well as all the latest news from the world of archaeology. Surrounded by a mysterious trench, only one Egyptian pyramid was ever constructed to look like it floats on water. Experts decode the ancient secrets of the pyramid that are locked inside its hidden tunnels. That was the blurb for Season 8, Episode 8 of the Science Channel's Unearthed, which first aired in January 2021, an episode called Egypt's Floating Pyramid, that being the Pyramid of Senesret II. It's the same pyramid I featured in my last video, located at El Lahoun in the Fayum region of Egypt. Beneath the pyramid we find passages cut into the bedrock, leading to the magnificent granite-lined burial chamber, and this houses arguably the most exquisite granite sarcophagus ever made by the dynastic Egyptians. But it's the bizarre superstructure that's been getting people talking on social media, with many false claims saying that this pyramid was burned and melted. In truth, we know that in the 19th dynasty of Egypt's New Kingdom, King Ramesses the Great removed the Chura limestone casing and reused it for his new building projects. This act of vandalism revealed the pyramid's core, made up of a limestone skeleton and infilled with dark mud bricks made from Nile earth, chopped straw and sand. The eroded and decayed nature of these bricks is what gives the pyramid its strange form today. They've been exposed to the elements for more than 3,000 years, and being a soft and malleable material, it means we end up with a dilapidated ruin. The mud bricks are darker than the limestone rubble, rocks and sand that surround it, and it therefore gives the pyramid this strange appearance. But in this video, I'm not going to focus on how it looks today, but the claims made regarding how it looked when it was complete. The Unearthed documentary features many credible Egyptologists and archaeologists, it's presented as real archaeology, and this whole concept of a floating pyramid illusion is something I'd never heard of before. Of course I wanted to investigate further, and I'm glad I did. And no, to clarify, I didn't think there was literally a floating pyramid of Egypt. I know that's not what the show was implying, but if this artist's impression and the sound bites are correct, that when finished this pyramid was completely surrounded by water, well, that is a pretty incredible discovery. Senesret's grand funerary complex is said to be surrounded by water, seemingly floating in the desert. Is said to be surrounded by water? Said by who? If true, it would have looked like ancient Egypt's primordial mound of creation, rising out of the waters of Nu. But when researching my last video, something about these claims just seemed a bit… off. Did it really look like this? The documentary shows the graphic, it says the sound bites, but it never really explains it. This is the only pyramid ever built to look like it floats on water. That's the claim, so let's take a closer look. The pyramid was built at the entrance to the Fayum Oasis, a depression or basin in the western desert. A channel from the Nile goes west through a narrow neck of land between the archaeological sites of El Lahoun and Gorob near Hawara, where it eventually drains into a desert hollow, and this is known as Lake Muris. If this artist's impression is accurate, the pyramid would have been a truly wondrous sight in the landscape, with the bright limestone casing reflecting the rays of the sun and a contrasting black pyramidion on top, and then totally encircled by the Nile floodwaters. But there's one enormous problem. The pyramid chambers and passages are not inside the pyramid, they're deep below it underground. There are two vertical shafts that lead inside. If the pyramid enclosure was flooded by design, so it looked like this, how would the remains of the king be protected from the water? 
even when the shafts were filled in and hidden. If the enclosure was flooded, water would still find a way inside. But even if the shafts were somehow hermetically sealed, which is highly unlikely, the natural limestone bedrock is not watertight. It's filled with fissures, is porous and permeable. If the bedrock at this location fell beneath the water table, one way or another the extensive subterranean corridors and chambers would fill with water, getting inside through the two vertical shafts, and also through the natural fissures and fractures that are found throughout the limestone bedrock. So, is the documentary implying the pyramid was not a tomb after all? Or is this graphic in the show's title just wrong and misleading? Of course, some believe that pyramids were not the tombs of the pharaohs. But for those that do believe it, it is certainly true that not every pyramid was built for such a purpose. The pyramid of Amos I had no associated burial compartments, and it is accepted by all that this pyramid was more like a cenotaph. And we have to remember that King Snefru of the 4th dynasty built two or maybe three pyramids, and so he wasn't buried in all of them. Some pyramids may well have been tombs, but some of them were certainly not. But most experts believe that this was the tomb of Senesret II, and there is good evidence in favour. The Egyptologists that feature in the show certainly believe that this was the tomb of the king. So why did the makers of the show create this graphic? And why did they call it Egypt's Floating Pyramid? The Pyramid of Lahum, an extraordinary ancient megastructure from Egypt's mysterious Middle Kingdom that appears to float on water. That's the third mention, but again the show fails to explain it. Inside the pyramid complex, there is also a smaller satellite queen's pyramid and eight unfinished or dummy mastabas, and all the structures are surrounded by a huge wall, part mud brick and part limestone bedrock. Today, the pyramid stands in the dry western desert, but you can see the Fayum oasis on the horizon. 4,000 years ago, this area was much wetter. Rainfall was higher, and the Nile floods would have been more extreme. But was it extreme enough to rise above the enclosure wall and engulf the entire pyramid complex? And why would the king be so careless? Why not build the wall much higher? Why would he want the eight mastabas, the majority of the queen's pyramid, and the passages and chambers associated with his own burial site submerged? The whole idea just doesn't make any sense. Senesret was no fool. In fact, he is a pharaoh best known for irrigation and land and water management. He was responsible for transforming the whole Fayum region, creating dams, dikes and canals, turning 17,000 acres of dry desert into prime agricultural land, right next to where he would build his pyramid. The location of the pyramid may well have been to commemorate his achievements and life's work. It was a bright white beacon in a lush green landscape, the exact opposite of what we see today. So, I don't believe he would have planned to submerge his pyramid complex like this. There is absolutely no way he would have put his own burial place under threat. The whole idea really is ridiculous. I believe the title of the documentary, Egypt's Floating Pyramid and the Associated Graphics, were just a dodgy attempt at sensational marketing, stretching the truth beyond the facts beyond reality, taking the featured Egyptologists out of context, simply to create an exciting title to sell the show to the masses. Surrounded by water, it seems to float above the desert. Bullshit. And yes, it really is. The show never explains it. It never explains why and how the pyramid was submerged. Nobody in the show ever says it was fully encircled by water. Just that the surrounding land was wetter and greener. And that's all because of irrigation. 
The whole idea of the floating pyramid makes absolutely no sense. And for one, the show doesn't explain it. And two, the contents of the show actually debunks its own title. You can see the title is an afterthought. They must have looked back at all the footage and information, and someone thought, aha, we'll call it Egypt's Floating Pyramid, and we won't explain it because we can't. It's made up. Nobody will even notice. Well, until today. As stated, Senesret was an expert of land and water management, and this really shows in the planning of his pyramid. He clearly never wanted the enclosure to flood, because the pyramid was encircled by an enormous trench, dug 10 feet deep into the limestone bedrock, and it was filled in with crushed stones and a thick layer of sand. It was created at the bottom edge of the pyramid, and no other pyramid of ancient Egypt has anything else quite like it. But it's exactly what we'd expect from a king like Senesret, who wanted to ensure that his pyramid complex remained dry. The complete opposite of this. Ezeldin Yazid is a structural engineer, and by recreating the trench material in a lab, and then modelling rainfall, he discovered that this trench would have acted like a sponge, with the stone and sand absorbing any rainwater that flowed down the side of the pyramid and the trench was deep enough to withstand the worst possible winter storms. It meant that rainwater would not get beneath the pyramid, and the base of the structure would not be damaged. Rainwater cascading off the pyramid would never go any further than the trench. It protected the foundations of the pyramid, and also the entire enclosure, the other buildings and the entrance into his tomb. The bulk of the pyramid is mud brick, and yes, this can be negatively affected when wet, but the fine Chura limestone casing was perfectly set in place, protecting the core. The lowest course was socketed into the bedrock. According to the documentary, butterfly connectors were also used to keep all the casing stones fitted together. But looking through the original excavation reports, as far as I'm aware, there's no evidence for any kind of butterfly connectors, so it looks to be another made-up claim. Maybe it's been seen at other pyramids, but for this pyramid, well, where's the evidence? Senesret went to so much trouble to make the pyramid pretty much watertight, and even created the deep trench to ensure the enclosure and substructure were not flooded. So of course, the pyramid complex never looked like this, because it would mean his engineering and construction planning would have been for nothing. The trench would be completely redundant. If this was a reality, the substructure would have been totally flooded. The entrance into the subterranean structure is found on the south side of the pyramid, a hazardous 40 foot deep narrow vertical shaft. It's beyond the protective trench, meaning rainwater cascading down the side of the pyramid would never get into the entrance, again showing careful planning. The shaft opens up into large tunnels that were built into the bedrock, so large you can stand up inside. They lead to the granite line chamber, and this has the exquisite granite sarcophagus. When archaeologists first went into the substructure, it was found to have been looted, but amazingly not everything was taken. A beautiful solid gold Egyptian cobra, which we know as a uraeus was found in the burial chamber, and this is something only worn by the king. This is a very strong indication the king was buried inside the chamber, inside this amazing granite sarcophagus, but the rest of the grave goods and his mummy were long gone. This object was probably dropped in haste. Inside and there's no evidence the substructure was flooded, and so this discounts the bizarre floating pyramid idea. But there's more. The documentary talks about an associated ancient town or village. It's located just 800 yards away from the pyramid, and it was home to the workers that built the giant structure. 
Many papyrus documents have been found in the village, and we know it was named after King Senesret. And after his death, it was home to the priests and worshippers associated with his cult, a settlement that was lived in for the next 100 years. The buildings were mainly made from mud brick, and if the Nile floods were this high, the buildings in this village would have been destroyed, because compared to the pyramid, the village was built even closer to the Nile, on a patch of land with a lower elevation. So, if this happened, then this happened. But there's no evidence that either site was ever submerged. In truth, there was never any illusion of a floating pyramid, because a floating pyramid means a flooded associated court centre, a submerged royal burial chamber, including the mummy and grave goods, eight submerged mastabas, two pyramids at risk, and pointless engineering of the land. Senesret built dams, dikes, and canals. He knew exactly what he was doing. And, if we're honest, there's no chance he would have allowed his eternal resting place to be submerged with water. I'm an amateur, but this documentary is filled with errors. It really is quite ridiculous. One of the show's experts even implies the pyramid was built onto marshy land, and that's the reason the pharaoh chose mud brick over stone, to make the structure lighter, to stop any possible subsidence. But the show fails to mention the pyramid is built onto the bedrock. It fails to mention it's built onto a shaped limestone bedrock hill, which was incorporated into the structure and this gave it absolutely solid foundations, even if the surrounding land became wetter through irrigation. The reasons for choosing mud brick is because compared to quarrying stone, it's cheap, efficient and less labour intensive, and the finish of the final structure would be just as good. And it's all because of the engineering prowess of the Egyptians, utilising the natural limestone hill building a robust stone skeleton, and then cladding the structure with finely fitted Chura limestone. Just like people making ridiculous social media posts about burnt and melted pyramids to get clicks, this documentary is absolutely no better. In fact, it's far worse. A professional presentation featuring the experts, but the claims it makes are just as outlandish. If you watch this show, you're left with a very pseudo-archaeological view of Middle Kingdom Egypt. It really is a strange world we live in, when we have to rely on dodgy ideas and bogus claims just to get people interested in the ancient world, when the achievements of our ancestors should really be enough. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.